Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series. Uh, we are into the near the end of December, two more weeks in December, this one included. Uh, December 22nd, 1984. We have a debut this week as Rip Oliver, easy for me to say, from the Pacific Northwest taking on uh, Iceman King Parsons Oliver, known primarily for his role in the Pacific Northwest Territory. Not that he didn't wrestle other places, but that's where he's most predominantly known. Parsons obviously has been a major star throughout the uh, world-class region for the last couple of years. Parsons and Oliver have a very hard-hitting match. Parsons gets the early advantage, but not for long. Uh, it is clear that Oliver, they have plans for, he's also very interactive with the crowd early, uses, you know, basic moves, the arm drag and, and arm locks and that, um, Iceman Parsons tries to kick the, the speed off and, uh, certainly is there. And so it's, you know, really, really, really clear that, uh, Oliver, who's a bit more of a brawler, tries to get uh, the selling aspect of things down. He, he takes the majority of the offense, uh, be it hip toss, arm drags, and the like, from Parsons. Parsons immediately goes into a situation of, um, you know, trying to slow the match down when needed. But uh, uses uses the arm bar, goes back to the arm several times. Uh, Oliver, I guess, being tested on television. It, had it been me, I think uh, in his TV debut, I would have had him in there with somebody that he could have squashed. Uh, but he does eventually break down the leg of Parsons and goes right after it, stays on it for a good bit of time uh, before you know Parsons does make a comeback with. Uh, chops and headbutts and the like. I mean, they literally are given probably close to 15 minutes here. And I would say that the, the match is 70-30 uh, with Parsons maintaining uh, about 70% of the offense. Maybe 80-20 would even be more accurate. Um, Oliver begs off quite a bit, is not uh, the least bit intimidated by much. And uh, he is kind of going in that direction and uh, uh, we then we, we do see that uh, Oliver is uh, more deliberate with his attack of the shoulder of his adversary and the referee is not impressed with some of the aggression the shoulder uh, breaker which is normally a move that uh, is not you know, as regarded today as it was back then, is a is a uh, post post match move that leaves uh, Parsons laying, and so the the I guess the heat comes after uh, the the continuation of uh, a lot of damage being done to Parsons. Uh, Oliver though does end up looking. Uh, like a disgruntled heel as he gets beaten with a small package before uh, doing the post-match damage. Uh, there is a wrestler of the year or feud of the year uh, plaque given to Kevin Von Erich uh, on behalf of the on behalf of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I mean that's just you know it's there. Bill Apter, who many people know that the Stanley Weston Mags, the affectionately known as the After Mags, you know, a big deal there. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes makes his way into the ring in your next encounter. And um, Haynes, you know, in a, again, an infusion from the Pacific Northwest. Um, Haynes in a squash match here uh, to get him over and... Uh, what's there. What's interesting is we will see a debuting Shawn Michaels. I don't know if it's his first match on television. Might very well be. I'll actually have to research that, but a debuting Shawn Michaels within a couple of weeks here, also against Haynes, and uh, uh, Billy Haynes, you know, regarded as a big deal, against Tony Falk, who Falk, for the most part, um, 
uh, is is known as the kind of southern guy. Lots of CWA, lots of Memphis stuff. But uh, Billy Haynes, obviously, with Sunshine, so we assume he is to be a babyface and is regarded as one. Um, Billy Haynes, again, a guy from the Pacific Northwest. He uh, uh, uses power moves early and often to get, to get things going his way, known for that uh, full Nelson. So just to think that he's, what, two years, maybe two and a, two and a quarter years here from the WrestleMania three with Hercules, just an amazing thing to think how he could have been so much more, but uh, personal personal demons and, and mental health and, and substance abuse issues got the better of Haynes. Haynes with a with uh, lots of power, press slams and drop kicks and the like. Agile guy for a guy his size, which I think could have been a, a big thing there too, but he never seemed to find really uh, his his permanent stride in wrestling. He'd have a, a run for a few months, maybe six months at the most, and then uh, uh, disappear due to drugs or whatever have you. And it, it just strikes me as sad that sometimes for, for wrestlers, male and female, like um, the personal part of things gets the better of them. Uh, clothesline by Haynes. Haynes, um, you know, is a guy who's always going to use that power, does win the match with the full Nelson. Um, and Sunshine is very satisfied with that victory, obviously. Of course, Sunshine coming in originally with Jimmy Garvin, Garvin turning on her, Garvin no longer with the promotion, had to find something else to do with her, obviously, and, uh, uh, Iceman Parsons talks about wanting revenge on Rip Oliver in a promo next. Kevin Von Erich, uh, is out here in the main event, uh, taking on... With with his brother Kerry taking on G, uh, Gino Hernandez and Chris Adams, probably the best main event they could have put out there. These four guys in any combination would have been amazing. Of course, Hart managing uh, Hernandez and Adams, and uh, uh, you know the the wars between Kevin and and Gino far from or and Adams rather far from over. Um, Kerry can fit just about anywhere where he needs to. They're given a good 10 minutes or so here before closing the program. You know, it's interesting to me that so many people complain about short matches, but, I mean, main events were routinely 8 to 10 minutes in the territory days, and it's not seen as a huge deal. So it's just interesting to me there. Um, Hernandez, Kerry, or Adams making... Carry, carry the weight, no pun intended there, and a uh, very basic tag match, but a but a thorough one. Um, Kerry Von Eric does manage to slam, um, or actually military press slam Chris from the top rope before making a tag to Kevin. Kevin getting in there and is a complete house of fire, but Chris runs away, as one would expect him to do. Gino Hernandez jumps him from behind. Hernandez pairs off with Kevin for a minute. Kerry and uh, uh, Kerry and Adams go at it. Kerry actually launches uh, Chris Adams over the top rope with that discus punch, and but not even that gets it done as uh, Kevin and Gino are your legal men at least for the moment. Uh, the match continues to break down. Neither side getting a real heavy advantage as both. Uh, sides looking strong. This is probably a tag match they could have gone with for the next six months if they had to, but um, the Von Erichs eventually do get a victory, I believe, by count out here, as uh, there is not really a, a heavy desire from Hart's men to uh, um, to, to to tangle when they're when they're in the defensive position. So that'll close us out for the 22nd of December. We'll be back with more action right after this.